Well, first up, 14 seats of northern Karnataka were amongst the 93 seats across 12 states where polling came to a close at 6 p.m. this evening. The voter turnout numbers in Karnataka, which will get updated as we go along, is above 66% as of 5.30 p.m. with Chikodi constituency recording the highest of 72%. Uh, we are waiting for the latest figures from the Election Commission. It was largely a direct BJP versus Congress battle in this phase. Key candidates in this phase included Union Minister Prala Joshi from the Hubali Darwad seat, Congress President Malikarjun Karge's son-in-law Radha Krishna Dordamani from the Gulburgi, Gulbarga or the Kalburgi Lok Sabha constituency. We'll also have our continuing focus on the Prajwal Revanna case. The Hassan member of parliament accused of several sexual crimes, including rape, is yet to appear before the special investigating team. And despite the CBI requesting and uh, the Interpol granting a blue collar notice from the Interpol, there is no clarity over where he is at the moment. His father and Hole Narsipur MLA H.T. Revanna, who faces a case of sexual harassment, remains in police custody with his bail hearing posted for tomorrow. Meanwhile, JDS Chief H.T. Kumaraswamy held a press conference in the city, hitting out at the Congress and accusing the state government of not acting against those who distributed the pen drives and made the Prajwal videos viral. H.T. Kumaraswamy has been making strong accusations against the state's Deputy Chief Minister and State Congress President D.K. Shiv Kumar. NDTV's Pratibha Raman was at the press conference and spoke exclusively to H.T. Kumaraswamy after that press conference. We have with us JDS President, Mr. H.D. Kumarasamy, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're very tired, sir. Just two questions. What is your main demand with respect to the SIT? Sir? We are demanding the way in which this government running from last 15 days about the inquiry. All this is going, it is misleading the people. Not only misleading, they wanted to restrict this inquiry for only smaller days to malign some leaders. That is the only actually their intention is there they, they doesn't want any actually proper investigation they doesn't want unnecessarily they are misusing the office so do you think that this will affect the poll prospects as well as it the alliance with the bjp on the poll nothing will happen all our candidates will they will going to win uh, what about the alliance with the bjp alliance let us see we are we are for longer term we have decided Alli our, our alliance issue is not concerned to about this subject this subject is different, our alliance is different. You have leveled serious allegations against uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi as well. Yes, whatever he allegated against the uh, Prajwal Revanna, he had some specific information with him. For that, actually, we are demanding SIT to give a summon to that Rahul Gandhi and take the information what he had. So, are you in touch with Prajwal Revanna? No, I am not in touch. With so, will he be cooperating with the investigation when will he return? Oh, oh. I don't know. That is not concerned to about me. That he has to uh, actually, whatever uh, is SIT they are inquiring, that is left to them. Finally, will you be meeting the governor, sir? No, we are going to meet. So, do you Thank you so much. That was Mr. Like H.D. Kumar Sami talking about how this will not affect the poll prospects and not the alliance as well. With camera person Kumar Pratibha Raman in Bengaluru for NDTV. Well, some very important questions there posed by Pratibha Raman to H.T. Kumaraswamy. Multiple dimensions here, but the focus is on when H. Prajwal Revanna will be before the authorities and investigators there. Uh, Pratibha Raman joins us from Bengaluru as well as Nihal Kidwai, who's tracking this uh, election and phase three in Hubali. But before we get to them, joining us this evening is Priyank Karge, Karnataka's IT minister and son of the Congress president who's been campaigning in the Kalburgi Lok Sabha constituency for Radha Krishna Doddamani, the Congress candidate there, and his uh, brother-in-law. Thanks very much for taking time out and speaking to us, Priyank. This is a must-win prestige battle there after the 2019 shock defeat for your father here post voting is there a sense of nervousness or optimism uh, no i think we are very very optimistic that uh, we are going to win this seat we have delivered on our uh, promises and uh, the people of kalburgi are looking for uh, development they're looking for change that uh, uh, that has uh, not happened since the last five years and uh, I'm sure that the people of Kalpurgi are going to bless Congress in a mightily big way. 
It's been a bitter exchange there. Uh, you've made allegations of voters being bribed using phone pay today in your constituency. A BJP functionary in Bengaluru has launched a complaint naming Radha Krishna Dordamani in an alleged scam. How do you respond? Uh, well, firstly, about the uh, phone pay, uh, 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 digital payments that have happened. I mean, we have uh, traced out uh, 250 transactions going in from one phone uh, to uh, possible uh, voters. And I think this is the first time we'll be able to track the digital uh, footprints of such a transactions for uh, voting. And uh, although the BJP will deny it and they might uh, try to do whatever they want, but it, uh, nobody makes 250 transactions at a time to one ground panchayat from one uh, phone. So anyway, whatever it is, we will be submitting a complaint with all the proofs uh, that we have. And since it's a digital transaction, you just can't wipe out the forensics so easily. So let's wait and watch what we can uh, do. And on your second point on the allegations of uh, uh, an alleged scam by Mr. Rala Krishna, he's already mentioned it in his affidavit. As usual, the BJP uh, read what they want to. Uh, they have no idea what an affidavit is. They don't know what goes, goes into it. In the affidavit, there's also a B report that has been uh, filed by the institution. And the case is not against him. The case is against the management of an uh, institution. So there is no personal allegation against him. There's no personal uh, 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 case of fraud uh, on him. And it is just that whatever is there on the institutions as a trustee, even he's a part of that, which is for which already uh, the courts have given him a B report for, uh, I mean, the investigation, the, for, I have filed a B report. He wants to reopen the case. The BJP functionary wants to reopen the case and that's left up to him. But I would urge them to well, first read and uh, then put up these facts. But the problem is that they have this entire WhatsApp university with them uh, and that, uh, yeah, that echoes down into the mainstream like how it is playing out now. Going beyond just Karnataka and this confrontation here and the local constituency there, uh, from a national point of view, uh, what's the sense after phase three? As we move from phase three to phase four, what's perhaps a key learning for the Congress? Oh, well, I think uh, strong uh, local leadership needs to be uh, uh, encouraged. Local issues uh, have to be uh, uh, played up. And uh, more importantly, uh, 10 years of uh, the Modi regime has been an utter disaster for any state, when you speak, so to speak, uh, locally. And uh, the non-delivery of governance, the rhetoric that uh, the um, uh, government speaks so much about, uh, which is, but it does not resonate at the grassroots level. People are worried about uh, uh, four or five important things, that's the economic uh, inequality, the price rise, the subversion of the constitution, uh, job, uh, the immense unemployment uh, problem that is going on. I think we need to stick to these basics and then go to pe uh, people. Roti Kapdar Makan is still an issue, uh, even though the 10 years of uh, Achenin have, uh, have come in. But uh, the people are not ready to solve the solve the bait of uh, Vikshit Bharat. So moving from phase two to phase three, I think we need to be more aggressive on uh, the 10 years of uh, the failure of the Modi government. Now to an issue that's dominated headlines, something deeply disturbing, the Prajwal Revanna case. While Prajwal Revanna himself is yet to appear before authorities, which is perhaps saying something, the JDSS Kumaraswamy is on an offensive, accusing Congress leaders and an important accusation there of spreading the videos and using pen drives and also some questions about who leaked it and how, accusing D.K. Shiv Kumar repeatedly. How do you respond to this? Uh, well, I mean, I would really love to debate this with uh, JDS or with the BJP. Um, see, nobody, uh, they're talking about how it got viral. The concept of viral is what? It's not in anybody's hand, hands. Once it moves from one phone to, from an individual's phone to a group, nobody knows how it, where it goes. Now, why aren't they, turn? see, the entire, um, this heinous act was, was done by his nephew. It was recorded by his nephew. It was stored in his phone by his nephew. 
it was it passed on to the nephew's driver the driver passed it on to the official bjp candidate of holena sipura who in turn god knows did what with it and it's gone viral so where is congress in it i can understand that if it was a honey trap by congress or it was a hidden camera episode that was uh, orchestrated by congress then you blame congress where is congress in all this you commit the horrific crime you record it you store it you uh, give it to your uh, your driver your driver gives it to somebody else and where does congress fit in all these things why the, why are you why the, why are they missing the core issue of getting justice to these uh, thousands of women so you know are you saying no one was aware of this earlier the concern sir is that many people seem to have been aware of these videos it's something that seemed to have happened over a long period of time and it was released appropriate at the appropriate time and for electoral reasons and that's deeply concerning um i completely agree with you see there's a lot of hearsay that goes on when there is an election right but when a seat of a former prime minister uh parliamentary constituency is discussed it is going to be discussed threadbare by the jds and the bjp in fact they did not uh, prajwal reva prajwal reva na seat was one of the last seats to be announced that means it was discussed threadbare in fact in one of the interviews uh, the anchor asked kumar swami uh, mr kumar swami saying that i believe prajwal reva prajwal reva na was not the choice of the bjp then he said yes i mean mr amit shah had a problem with that candidate sir but we explained to him saying it, it was okay to give it and he got to win it and the holener sipura candidate the bjp candidate uh, officially wrote to mr vijendra officially wrote to uh, uh, mr amit shah had a press conference telling them please don't give this ticket to prajwal revana because he has these allegations against him so why didn't the jds leadership take it seriously and why did the bjp leadership take it seriously or despite knowing the facts these facts they chose to turn a blind eye and gave him a ticket and then mr modi went and campaigned to him and said like every vote for mr prajwal revana is going to strengthen me so it's very very clear that they were aware of the facts they were aware of his antecedents and still they went ahead and did it Right, we'll keep a close focus on that. But thanks very much, Priyank Kharge, for joining us. You seem to have lost your voice with all that campaigning. Uh, thanks very much for speaking to us. We also have this evening with us Nihal Kidwai, our reporter from Hubli, as well as Pratibha Raman from Bengaluru. Along with them is also our analyst Sandeep Shastri, Manisha Priyam, and Shugata Shrinivasa Raju. First to you, Pratibha. You've been tracking this case very closely. Um, quick. update on any word you're hearing from the authorities as far as where prajwal revanna could be and when they expect to, him to be before them for questioning Uh, the SIT has been quite tight-lipped about that, and uh, what we hear from sources is that they have absolutely no information about Prajwal Revanna's whereabouts, despite the custodial interrogation that is being done of his father, H. D. Revanna. What we hear is that uh, the main reason for the blue corner notice that has been issued is only because there's been absolutely no clue about Prajwal Revanna's whereabouts. in the meantime the only information that they've received so far from prajwal revana is in the form of the post that was put up on social media platform by prajwal revana himself or so we believe where he did mention that uh, he is in germany and that uh, truth will prevail and he has sought time from the sit uh, in the form of a letter that was presented to them uh, through his uh, advocate and uh, that was the only information which was anyway denied by the sit they wanted to expedite the investigation and that is precisely why they are covering all angles to explore where prajwal revanna is in order to answer your question when will prajwal revanna return to india that question is still in the air veera that's a question still in the air you say pratibha nihal kidwai joins us uh, from hubli nihal what's the sense you're picking up give us an overview obviously of the voting in the 14 lok sabha constituencies but also what's the sense you're picking up from the bjp uh, how do they plan to go forward on this uh, this extremely sensitive important issue that is expected to play out over the next few days which i i mean the prajwal revanna case see i spoke to uh, 
Parlahad Joshi, who is the union minister, and he distanced himself from the entire episode. What he said that three seats were allotted to the JDS. It was JDS' turn to uh, decide that who is going to uh, contest from the, uh, which Lok Sabha constituency. So the BJP has nothing to do with this. This is what Parlahad Joshi has precisely told me. And he is expecting that the performance of the BJP that was there in 2019 will be repeated again. But here, the situation is different. What was there in 2019 and where we are standing now? Uh, the voting percentage is low, as the, uh, you, you have also seen. And though the BJP is mostly banking on Modi's guarantee here, the Congress is also banking on uh, its guarantees. So there is a conflict, and both are hopeful, both are optimistic that their approach would definitely work. So, uh, but we should not forget that all the 14 seats where the voting had taken place today were won by the BJP in 2019. The question is, will the BJP be able to uh, to repeat its performance? This is a pakora shop, as you can see after the voting. Most of the people, all the voters have come here. Most of the people are, uh, right. see, voters are here. When I, I was there in the morning, I, I saw all of them. What do you think that the BJP performance in 2019 will repeat? Repeat, sir. Good voting, but it's a little bit less, but it's a chance to come again, sir. What do you think? Voting is good, the result is good. So this uh, mixed reaction is here, and we have to wait for 4th of June. Okay, okay. Thanks very much there, Nihal. Let's go to our experts this uh, evening. Two questions we are posing in terms of uh, an overview after phase three in terms of the southern states. And the other is uh, the question as far as what happens next for the JDS as far as the Prajwal Revanna case. Manisha Priyam, Sandeep Shastri and Shugata Srinivasa Raju join us this evening. Manisha Priyam, first to you. Do you see it getting tougher for the JDS. I know it's an extremely important, extremely serious allegations that have been made. And I guess the focus is to get Prajwal Revana first before authorities. But you saw Kumaraswamy on the offensive this afternoon. Do you see the going getting tougher for the JDS? Yeah, most certainly for the JDS because uh, its alliance partner, the BJP, will also be forced into a situation where they will not be able to openly defend uh, this act of crime. And the best that the BJP can do is to isolate, uh, you know, the perpetrator of the crime, whoever that be, and let him bear the consequences of his own actions, uh, which is correct in law. But that will also mean uh, uh, that, uh, you know, the uh, JDS itself uh, will be a party which is, albeit only a family party and has a limited location, uh, will have a taint on them that they will find difficult to defend. Remember, they are very strong in a particular region and also have some votes uh, in the Kalyan Karnataka region that's gone to elections today. Now, there have been two sets of challenges apart from the votes of the Pichras or the backward caste. They also have the votes of the Muslims. Now, the minority votes in any case because of the kind of alliance will be under strain. Uh, but this kind of pressure coming will mean that there will be a shrinking of the acceptance space for the right. JDS within the electorate uh, because the number of women who are seem to have suffered at the hands of Revanna, it will become an issue of the community. It will become an issue where women will become fearful and silent and therefore it will be difficult for the JDS to keep holding up on its own and defunding Revanna any further on this. Right, that's an important point that you make there, Professor Sandeep Shastri. Uh, first, on this as well as on the overview, uh, as far as going from phase three to phase four, what's the big takeaways we have as far as phase three over is concerned? 88 of the 130 seats and three of the five southern states have finished voting. Give us an overview of what you see the situation is and also the impact on the JDS as far as this case is concerned. Uh, Veera, if you look at uh, the... 14 seats of voting today in Karnataka. Uh, I would clearly divide it into three parts. If you look at Kalyan Karnataka, where uh, economic uh, backwardness is a key issue, I think there is a very tough fight and the Congress is making every effort to use its uh, guarantees to be able to do well there. And uh, 
as was just now said by dr manisha the women vote is critical in this area and the congress is hoping to be able to uh, win over that vote uh, in the kittur karnataka region i think the bjp seems to be a little on stronger ground as compared to the kalyan karnataka region but in kittur karnataka their challenge is their internal contradictions within the party which are posing a challenge to them and finally central karnataka you have the congress trying to revitalize its presence there and the bjp is trying to retain its presence so you have a very tough fight in all these three regions your second question what is the wider impact of this at the end of phase 3 I think at the end of phase three across the country, one trend you are seeing, which your graphic is just now showing, is a slight reduction in the voter turnout. Now, maybe 2019 was a special election. We should compare it with 2014, possibly, where it does not show so much of a decline in voting. And as we have always been stressing, right. voting decline does not indicate in any empirical sense support or opposition to a ruling party or to an opposition. and on your last point i think this is going to be a very very severe test for the janata dal uh, there is no shadow of doubt that what the uh, hasan mp has uh, been involved in is shameful and something that needs to be protested and we should have a zero tolerance on that matter and the janata dal will find it quite a okay. challenge to be able to explain okay let me just take this across to sugata shrinivasa raju since we are running out of time uh, let me just take this across to sugata shrinivasa raju sugata the larger uh, narrative as far as this election is concerned would you see it primarily playing on local factors uh, you know it's not turning into a national election at several places it seems to be still being fought as a local election would you agree with that i i do agree veera you know i mean uh, if you go If you look at the 14 seats that have been fought in Karnataka today, you know each seat has had a rebel. You know, I mean, it's it's also about dynastic families. You know, there is a huge dynastic issue. I mean, besides the 14 seats, you know, there is this Prajal Ravana issue, which is also, an, I mean, uh, I mean, seen as a kind of uh, act of dynastic hubris also. But besides that, you know, today in the contest, you see. the edurappa family shamnur family bangarappa family so it's about uh, families that we see and in in uh, in the in the 14 seats today uh, your whole bjp is on a i mean i don't agree that bjp is having a kind of easy ride there because you know i mean the lingayats there are also divided and lingayat the sub caste issue has come up and you have seen pontiffs rebelling pontiffs being you know i mean uh, Uh, contesting and withdrawing and all of that and if you look at koppal you know i mean uh, the the sitting mp resigned and joined the congress so there are a lot of issues for the bjp it is not like what it was in 2019 and on the prajwal revana issue see new facts are emerging and politics is a very fast changing game already this morning we have seen kumar swami who was on the back foot till yesterday now after the dk shukumar uh you know i mean aspects have come out uh, i think there is a i mean they are clearly apparent and they have also isolated the black sheep inside the family they have also sort of you know said that you know action should be taken against this person all of that you know the 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 statements have been made but the congress which was on the upbeat till yesterday i suddenly notice a certain kind of nervousness in the congress leadership because dk shukumar has been named by the whistle blower as the kingpin and there may be a lot of implications and you've also seen a very uh, interesting meeting taking place between amit shah and kumar swami i don't think this alliance is ending this alliance will sort of see uh, we will will go okay. through it. yeah it's, it's it's a tough journey but then i think they will go through it and they will sort of see it's 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 advantage kumar swami okay, in a way because a, gets gets hold of the party completely now the other branches of the family get out okay there are mul multiple points of view uh, 
there are multiple points of view on that. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Uh, but as Manisha pointed out, uh, the investigations are an important aspect of it. Getting Prajwal Revanna before investigators is a crucial uh, issue given the nature and the gravity of the allegations, the seriousness of the allegations. But uh, thanks very much, Shugata, Sandeep Shastri, as well as Manisha Priyam for joining us this uh, evening. That's all we have time for on the Southern View this evening. News and updates continue right here on ADTV.